I huffed and puffed under my breath as I stared into God's mouth. I felt like the big bad wolf ready to interrupt the three innocent little pigs as they hurriedly fortified their makeshift homes. I grinned at this thought and then turned my head back to look for Margaret. She was a couple of feet down the hill from the entrance of the cave, holding a walking stick close to her petite chest. Hurry up, I called down to her. I turned back to the cave, still grinning. An old rotted sign outside read, God's Mouth Cave, keep out. What a tired cliché. Margaret finally made it to the entrance and stood beside me, almost doubled over and out of breath. I looked down and smiled. Check it out, I laughed. God's mouth. Ever wonder where Jesus' butt is? I chuckled to myself. Margaret was less amused, however. Give me the damn water bottle, she said, exasperated. The open bottle met her lips, and for a moment, I felt peaceful in a way, watching her drink the water. Actually, I take that back. The peaceful comment, I mean. It was more of a feeling that was sort of hard to put my finger on or give a name. But I could settle for a nice content. Content seemed to be one of those words that manifest itself when natural human words seem to fail. Again, not a cliché, but it felt good to feel a strange, mixed up, sort of happy for once. I sighed and turned my flashlight on. I pointed into the cave. Black. God's mouth. This seemed like the antithesis of a holy spirit. I turned again to Margaret. Are you ready? I asked. She was finally standing up straight. She nodded, and I clapped a friendly hand on her back, and we walked in to God's mouth. The inside was not unlike the preview I had glimpsed outside with my flashlight. Dark, dismal, endlessly black. It seemed to stretch on forever. No matter how I positioned my flashlight, the rocky terrain was damp and imposing. The last natural light slowly disappeared behind Margaret and I as we made our way deeper and deeper. I found it strange how soft and compelling the world around me now appeared. Despite the stalactites and stalagmites, and other various rocky formations being so jagged. It seemed that even amongst the pointed teeth of God, I could lay down and rest here forever. It was comfortable. Apparently, Margaret didn't agree. She shivered uncomfortably under my arm, and I raised my eyebrows. Need your coat? I asked. I tried to look at her and make non-verbal communication as explicit as possible until I realized that we were lost in the inky blackness of the mouth. I bit my lip and waited, but she didn't respond. For a couple minutes, we walked in silence. She stopped and stood motionless, and I stopped too. Why the hell are we even in here, she said. She sounded a bit irritated. I shrugged, more to appease myself than her, and I shoved my flashlight under my face, bladed shadows obscuring half of it, the other half illuminated in a wretched mask. Spooky! I cried, chuckling. But she didn't move. I sighed. I thought you wanted to go, I said. I noticed my voice echoed against the cave walls at any volume. I mean... I began again, scratching my chin. You did say you wanted to go see some nature for our vacation. 
and you did sound impressed when I told you about my visit to Mammoth Caves a couple years back. So, my voice trailed off. I could sense her irritation. No, she said. I frowned. No, you wanted to go here. I wanted to go to a beach or something. But no, a cave. A cave, Nathan. She sounded more like the big bad wolf now. I know that you have this weird fetish, or splunking, or something, whatever it's called. But I really don't want to be dragged into it. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to go on a trip and get into nature and fresh air. But this? I could hear her arms flail around and gesture about in the thick air. This is cave air, not fresh air. This air is practically fermenting. Plus, isn't this illegal? Can we just please leave? We stood there. The only sound that could be heard was the electricity in the air being stifled and smothered by the damp atmosphere. Finally, I began to walk. I didn't hear Margaret follow me, but I kept moving forward. Then, Nathan, she said. Stop. Please stop. So I stopped. I'm sorry, she said. I could hear her moving closer to me. I'm tired and I'm not used to running and climbing around and the like. I'm just tired. It's okay, I said. She gripped my arm. Really, it's fine. I shook my head. So, which way is out? I don't really remember. I could feel Margaret physically pause. Neither of us could remember. Somehow, in the confusion of our argument, I had forgotten which way we had been moving. Idiot, I thought to myself. I should have brought a rope or something to trail from the entrance of the cave. I had to take action, so without much thought, I turned 180 degrees and said, this way. We walked for what seemed like to be hours. My feet were tired and sore, and I could hear Margaret's groans from behind me. She held my hand tightly. I felt terrible. This was all my fault. Then I froze. Hey, hey, I said. Put your hand out. Feel this rock. I could hear Margaret's bare palm press against the stone. Isn't this like abnormally warm? I said. She didn't say anything. I began to work my way along the wall, feeling it as I went, shining the flashlight in front of me. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my head as the ceiling of God's mouth met with my scalp. Ow! I shouted. Oh, Nathan, are you okay? Margaret asked. She seemed on the verge of panic now. I'm fine, I said. Please, calm down. We'll get out of here soon. I promise. I started again, pointing my flashlight upwards now to see the ceiling above me. It seemed to be getting narrower. That was strange. Listen, uh, Margaret, babe. I said through clenched teeth. I think we've got to turn around. Margaret sighed next to me. Again, we walked for a decent length. I kept my flashlight pointed upward this time. Sure enough, the space in the cave seemed to become smaller and smaller. There was this resonating light left in God's mouth aside from my flashlight. I'm sure Margaret would have been able to see the whites of my eyes spreading in panic. We were hopelessly lost. I let go of Margaret's hand and began to feverishly feel my way along the walls. No! Nathan! I heard her shout. I kept going. We had to get out. If we were lost, no one would be able to find us. I kept feeling along the wall until I abruptly hit a corner. Fuck! I whispered under my breath. Margaret, this seems to be a dead end. I spun on my heel. 
Margaret? No answer. I began to repeat my process again, almost running as I felt the wall run past my fingertips. Cool, damp rocks and jagged spears. Suddenly, I find myself in a corner again. No, 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 I shouted. Margaret! I was belting her name out now. In the corner of the cave's maw, where I had been thwarted so many times already, I heard a noise. It sounded like muffled static from a television. I pressed my ear against the rock. It seemed to be getting even warmer now. And I heard the faint sounds of Margaret on the other side of the rock. She was screaming. No, 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 I said. No, 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 no. I began running haphazardly into the walls around me. With dawning realization came a wave of sheer horror. There was no entrance. There was no exit. Only these four corners. And me. I could feel blood begin to trickle from the cut. I managed to get from bashing my body into the cave walls. They were closing in on me. They were coming in for the kill. And soon, I could imagine them pressing against my bones and the sickening crack afterwards. I sat there for hours, waiting for death. My flashlight was becoming dim and blinking. Finally, I felt the soft touch of these rocky walls press against my back. I began to cry as I laid down on the ground. I let my flashlight roll the small hills of stone. As I quietly lay prone, tears dripping down my face, I turned and looked at the flashlight. Its last fading beams of light pointed something not far away from my face. I squinted in the darkness. My eyes widened, and I felt tears fall even harder from my face. The rocks were piercing my skin now, and I could feel the blood running down from all sides. There, in the last light of my dying flashlight, was the appetizer. The dim beam shone on a hand whose nails were painted red, and I screamed in agony as I watched God's mouth chew its latest meal.